Official Washington consumed by the President Trump's firing of James Comey this week. You see Vice President Pence right there. The big question now, what is going to happen next? And we're joined now by two of America's top lawyers, Lawrence Tribe, constitutional law professor at Harvard, and Ken Starr. Of course, he was the independent prosecutor of Bill Clinton back in the 1990s. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us right now. And uh, Mr. Tribe, thank Professor you. Tribe, let me begin with you. You have a piece in the Washington Post this morning. President Trump must be impeached. Here's why. Why? Because he has shown no respect for the rule of law, he regards himself as above the law, he thinks it's appropriate to essentially have a job interview with the FBI director. As we now know, the FBI director wanted to be reappointed, and the president essentially told him, well, we'll see. It depends. Will you plead loyalty to me? Well, kings and monarchs and dictators seek that kind of loyalty. He essentially said, if you assure me that this nettlesome Russia investigation will go away, maybe I'll keep you on. That's obstruction of justice, even within the technical terms of the criminal code, but they're not relevant. The most relevant thing, because impeachment is our system's last resort for someone who treats himself or herself as above the law, the most relevant thing is whether this president by his recent course of action, on top of his violations of the Foreign Corruption or Emoluments Clause, this president has shown that he cannot be trusted to remain within the law and our Constitution's last resort for situations of that kind is to get the but, person but, out of office. Let me, let, me, let me interrupt you right there, because the president mm -hmm. also said in that same interview that he wanted the investigation to be done properly, and he does have the right to fire an FBI director, doesn't he? Sure. The right to fire does not include the right to fire in the context of what amounts to a bribe. That is to say, I can fire you, you know, but I won't if you do what I have no right to ask you to do, and that's to lay off. And of course the president said he wants to get to the truth. He always says that, but I think we all know that those words do not speak as loudly as his actions. Professor Starr, mm -hmm. your response? Well, I have the greatest respect for, uh, for Professor Tribe, very fond of him, but uh, I emphatically disagree. I certainly agree that what he just said in terms of the last resort, my goodness, that, that is correct. We don't want to go through this. Uh, I think the key point is what is the reality as opposed to what is the theory. And the reality is, and we just heard it from Senator Warner, the investigations are going forward. In fact, Senator Warner just said, we're going to get to the truth. And I have the greatest respect for the FBI. There are over 10,000 special agents. There's now a very able acting director of the FBI. Uh, in fact, if anything, there are issues with respect to his spouse that have been raised. I think we need to allow the FBI to do its work. Uh, my two tours of duty at the Justice Department, uh, my role as independent counsel, I worked with almost countless FBI uh, agents. So the directors are always people of great uh, integrity. So I have complete confidence. It's a terrific guardrail. There are checks and balances in our system. And so let's allow the system to work. As you point out, you're an independent, independent counsel. So, of course, the law has expired, but the Deputy Attorney General, Ron, Rod Rosenstein, could appoint a special counsel. In this case, you've heard the Democrats saying that is necessary at this point. And it, does the fact that uh, the Deputy Attorney General was involved in this firing, was, was asked by the President to come up with this, these recommendations or at least this explanation for his decision, does that call into question his independence and should he be appointing a special counsel? No, I, I don't think that it causes any uh, reason whatsoever, and I was surprised to hear Senator Warner say uh, very uncomplimentary things about the memo. I think Americans should read the memorandum. It's a three-page memorandum, and let the American people decide for themselves. Rod Rosenstein is a great uh, patriot. He is uh, overwhelmingly uh, respected. Uh, he was confirmed almost unanimously by the United States Senate, and he just took office. So let's give him the opportunity to come to his own judgments instead of putting all this pressure on him. And I'll just say this, there's some huge costs. And I think the nation knows this with the appointment of a special prosecutor. The first is delay. A special prosecutor, a special counsel is a startup operation. He or she has nothing, absolutely nothing, 
got to go get office space, uh, among other things. But here's the key. The FBI is going to continue to serve whoever that special counsel is, heaven forbid if we have one. Uh, and moreover, that special counsel is likewise going to come under political scrutiny. I can speak for that. Lawrence Walsh and the Iran-Contra can speak to that. There is no way to insulate an investigation at this level from criticism and the like. So let's trust our guardrails. Let's trust the checks and balances that we have, especially with the Senate Intelligence Committee. And again, I think we should be reassured when you've got Chairman Burr uh, and Senator Warner, both of whom are very respected members of the Senate, both saying, Democrat and Republican, we're going to get to the truth of the matter. Professor Trebb, you heard that. Trust the guardrails. Well, trust is not what the framers of the United States a constitution and of this country relied on. It's true that the president hasn't yet succeeded in ripping the guardrail apart, but I don't think we need to wait. Yes, there should be a special counsel, um, and that special counsel, as Ken Starr himself, a friend whom I admire, showed, can do his work effectively, but that's not enough. The whole country needs to get to the bottom of what really happened with the Russian collusion allegations, but in the meantime, we have a president who himself says, trust me. He does not accept the boundaries of law. He basically says that if anybody gets too close for comfort, I'm going to get rid of them. And as long as that's in place, we cannot afford as a country to put our fate in the hands of someone so whimsical and so unpredictable. The idea that it might take some time to get office space, my goodness when we are at the very verge of having the fundamentals of our system collapse, we can afford some office space. This is a serious matter. <laughs> and the only way to avoid a constitutional crisis, and I'm not saying we're there yet, is to reassure the public that the person leading the government is someone who has loyalties other than to himself. Fair. not loyalties to well, the foreign governments that help him financially. Professor Starr, we're just about out of time. I just ask you, put your old hat on. If you were looking into this case, would you be demanding tapes from the White House if indeed they do exist? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the uh, investigation is, has got to be thorough. Uh, and that means you go where you think the truth is. So you follow the evidence. Uh, so you take the steps. But I'll just say this, and I know you've got to go. We need to allow our system to work. Our system is not one person. It is the office of the presidency, but it's also this entire structure that our framers put in place, but it's also right now the men and women of the FBI who we can trust in terms of their integrity and professionalism. That is all we have time for today. Thank you both very much for your time. Thank you.